Hey, what's up, fishing folks? I'm at a new lake, a new place, and I've never been before. Let's get right into it. It's time to go fishing. Get up off the couch. It's time to go fishing. Get up out the house. It's time to go fishing. Go and get the kids. It's time to go fishing. You'll be glad you did. It's time to go fishing. All right, fishing folks. Here we go. We're in a new place for the first time ever. All right. The first thing you want to do is uh, do a little bit of research. Your local Department of Wildlife Resources. You know, they, that's where I got most of my information from. Uh, I didn't find any, couldn't really find any pictures or anything, you know, just a couple. Was it grass? No, that was a bite. All right, smaller fish over here. Now, Google Maps is another good, uh, is another good tool. You know, that way you can look at the, uh, you know, look at the structure of the lake, see how it's made, you know, find out where the dam is. See if you can see where the more shallow parts are. A little bit of grass here, all right, I'm still shallow. Right in this area here. No little biggie. But on Google Earth, you know, you can, um, you can cycle through photos, take a look at the lake, um, you know, four or five years in the past, and that'll give you a good idea, you know, how it's made, you know, structure cover, things like that. Just gather information, use all your internet tools, uh, any kind of Facebook groups maybe, if you're lucky enough to find some, or any kind of YouTube videos, if you can find those too. Now the second step is just get your line wet and go fish it, baby. Exactly what I'm doing here right now. Uh-oh, oh man. Was that a fish? Let me try that again. Let me see me fan casters right here, cause it might. All right, folks, we got some fish busting right over here. Oh man, and see, it's real shallow right here, folks. And something I didn't know, there's meal foil in this uh, in this little lake right here. There's a lot of meal foil, <clears throat> so that also helps me uh, figure out some stuff. And I'm in real, real, real shallow, shallow water here. So turn on around. And when you get to a new spot, folks, you know, just look around, see what you see. You know, you can fish it at the same time, which I'm getting ready to do right now. I'm pulling up right on these uh, laydowns right here. And I see some turtles perched up on top. All right, so I'm just glide, slowly gliding my way on over to see if it gets deeper. Subtle changes in depth. Any subtle changes along the bank, like uh, if it goes from <clears throat> mill for you know see this grass line if it goes from mill for to you know just a muddy bottom or a rocky bottom you know fish could sit up on that transition and i see right now i'm getting in that deeper water here so upon my research i found out there are red ear sunfish bluegill crappy largemouth uh and uh channel cats that reside in this beautiful place right here i got the barber garland uh Cajun cricket, all right, baby shad special. And um, this right here is a 1 16th ounce weedless jig head, okay? And me, myself, personally, I'm a, I like to fish structure, I like to fish targets and stuff. Folks, I see the water's a little bit deeper over here, so I'm just gonna see what's up with this, uh, this little spot right here. And this is primarily how it goes, folks. You just fish. See what's uh, you know see what's in here match the hatch you don't always have to match the hatch but it's best if you do i got a fish yes i do got a fish yeah baby oh man he got me hung up almost yeah nice come on that's a bass too oh yeah holla at your daddy holla at your boy come on fishing folks look at this oh it's a beautiful jump right here oh yeah baby that fish had me. And this baby got some fight in him, boy. Come on up here on the boat. <laughs> this is a success. Fishing folks, all right. There you go, proof is in the pudding. Ah, he hooked good, I hooked him good too. All right, folks. And that's it right there, people. All right, folks, well, I got my little buddy right here in my hands. Uh, the bass are the apex predators, right? 
I know, you know, I know they'll eat the sunfish, they'll eat the bluegills and stuff like that. So I picked me a color that not only the bass would eat, but the crappie would eat also. Um, and there you go, lo and behold, I was fishing, you know, structure, cover, stuff over there. I noticed the depth change, you know, as just coming over and looking, you know, clear water also helps. You can see the bottom and it helped me and allowed me to see the depth change coming from back over yonder that way. And so I came over here, posted up, made a couple casts, you know, bam, caught a fish. All right, it's like clockwork. Now, let's go deeper into the lesson. With that research, you know, that allows you to know what kind of base to, base to kind of choose from, because I'm kind of, I went in here blind. It might be only just one bass up there. And I kind of went in here blind, folks, and I only had uh, a couple articles to go off of. And so that's really all I needed. And I just chose the, uh, I chose a bait that would match the hatch. Orange, you know, green pumpkin chartreuse. You know, oh, I thought I had a bite, you know, some grass. <laughs> those are those are uh, natural uh, bluegill colors and sunfish too. Next one. All right, folks, I'm over at the next, at the next lay down. See if I can get another. Oh boy. That wasn't no good cast. Or was it? Alright, folks, what I'm doing is I am going for stuff that I see. Stuff that could potentially hold a fish on. Up, oh, and I just got tapped by a little. a little something. What you can visually see in the water that could potentially hold fish. That's the first place to start with your best chances of catching something. That's another little tap, yeah. All right, that's a little mini baby something over there. All right, folks, I am just fishing along here. I got my anchor up, I'm just drifting. And what could potentially be over here? I'm getting taught by the little baby bluegills over here. All right, let's see, I one dash right there. That spot, you know, I've noticed that uh, the first set of laydowns I went to that was pretty deep. You know, over here is getting a little shallow, so I don't think this could hold fish. Cover that's a little too shallow, I won't hold fish all the time. Folks, I cannot see the bottom right here. I must need some deeper water. Let's see, let's see if anything over here. Damn, huh? Hung a turtle. The thing he came off. Goodness gracious. Trying to go through all that. All right, folks, I got a fish on, folks. Oh, yeah. What we got here on the on the Panther Martin called a bluegill. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> this little thing, he got a mouthful of hooks, too. That's probably the fish that was splashing up right behind the boat there. Oh, little fella. Now see it, folks, as y'all can see now. Fish eat this, all right. There's a little bit of green pumpkin in here. I see a little purple, all right. White belly. Okay, there's a little bit of yellow in there. Or chartreuse, you know, bluegill colors, all right. Let y'all see that. Let that bad boy go back.
definitely dirty over here, I'll tell you that. All right, fishing folks, I'm just uh, not really anchoring down. I am power fishing. <clears throat> All right, I got a couple of baits I know that work good. I'm going with that. I got this Panther Martin on here. So. Got a fish, there you go, on a Panther Martin. Yep, that's all he got off. Wow. Yeah, I got us a crappy. Oh yeah. Come on up here. Is that a crappy? No, it's not. It's another bluegill. I ain't bluegill. <laughs> These look like voracious, man. He came right as soon as that Panther Martin tapped that tree limb. He came right from under there, man. Right from under that tree and just crushed it. Oh, that was, oh man, that's a lot of bluegill right here. I saw him. It's just a bunch, like three or four. Let's see. Let me see if there's a keeper in the bunch. Oh, yeah. Nah, let me see that one. You know, I might move on because there might not be any keepers over here. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Man, these blue yellow freaking trying to crush this bait. The fast I retrieve it, like, it's just, they just kill it, man. Hold on. Uh oh. You know, I might need to, uh, I might need to switch up. Salva baits and um, yeah, they hanging right up there. They hanging tight to that and lay down right there. I don't see any big ones in the bunch, so I'm moving on, folks. Well, that's just how it is, folks. You know, I got a fish right there. I saw him come and hit that. That's a little <laughs> wow. Look at that. That is so beautiful. They getting bigger. They are getting bigger fishing, folks. I might have a meal. Before you know it, see. And one key thing is uh, another thing to do with bait selection. As I tend to keep baits that are all purpose, they catch any, they catch multi species of fish, and any time of the year, you know, versatile baits. So I fish with versatility first. I put versatility first when I fish. That way I can catch bass, bluegill, crappy, anything. And I can fish all day long. Let's say the bass stop biting. Hey, let's go catch some bluegill over here. The bluegill stop biting, we're gonna turn some bass up, you know. And right now I'm just beating the bank up with these little bluegill. Hopefully I can find some big bluegill. Crappy. I caught that one nice bass. See, the bass hit the slower moving bait. All right. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just continuing to beat the bank. All right, I'm going to stick to this pattern. 
right here. Oh, man, I'm getting blown away. All right, folks, now, and when you're fishing a fast moving bait, a reaction bait, I got my boat positioned where I can fish parallel to the bank, sort of at a little angle. I can just fan cast. Oh, wow. I saw that. All right. Let me see here. I think the Panther Martin is going to rule this day. Ah, that I blew here just. These fish are coming out of nowhere, y'all. I'm telling you. Oh, hold on. Got to get it right, get it tight. All right. <clears throat> Yep, and folks, it's very important that you uh, also pay attention to your surroundings. And it splashes, oh wow, that big boy followed it. That was a keeper bluegill right there. That was a keeper. And he followed it out to shadows. Dang. All right, folks. Try yo yo retrieve. Maybe if I slow the retrieve down. Dang. Nope, the yo yo retrieve ain't working. They want something fast. They want fast. They want me to burn it back. Wow. Snap. <sighs> no. You know what? I'm gonna let this sink. What the fuck? Wow. Am I recording? Hell yeah, look what I found. Wow. That's the big that's the best catch of the day off that crank bait. Dang. Wow. Holy. Oh, is anything attached to it? Wow. That's crazy, y'all. Just found a rod in the freaking lake. Oh, <laughs> wow. Hey, I can use the hook, man, but it's too rusted out. Hey, I got a barrel swivel. Cool. You know, I'm keeping this real. I and mean, I'm keeping this uh, rod. The reel might not be no good. This is a Zepco 33 Platinum. I don't know. Let's see. It's the KS. Uh oh. Hey, it's the KS. <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. 
It's crazy. Wow. Amazing. All right, folks. I got another all-purpose lure to smelt mineral. All right, in uh, in clear water, I find that uh, this works a lot better than in dirty water. I have caught fish in dirty water on this too, but clear water, this bait does much better. away from that fish over there. I'm gonna let it sink to the bottom. I got him that time. Oh yeah. Folks, on that smelt metal. Oh, hello. Mr. Bluegill, you're getting bigger. But you ain't no keeper yet. Oh man, that was a bigger fish, I do declare. You know what? I'm gonna let this bad boy sink to the bottom or sink. Let's see here. Folks, I got a fish on with this Panther Martin here. Yeah, another bluegill. They over here, I might move now, because I caught enough small ones. All right, folks, <laughs> if, you to look, if you look directly in front of us, you'll see a blue heron, all right? And I always follow those blue herons because they want to catch some fish like I do, so. Wherever I see a blue hand running, I'll pull up right beside him. You know, I'll fish that spot. And that's another way. That'll help you, uh, you know, break down some stuff, figure out the fish. And now, we're establishing a pattern here. I want to find some keeper bluegills. I'm just drifting oh i saw that he missed it i don't know if that was a keeper or not i mean you know what i may change colors on him maybe i might switch to a yellow i mean it's uh, you know what and then again i think the bluegill could be spawning still He was chasing that bad boy too. That was a keeper right there, y'all. I gotta get this fish. Oh, I need to back up. There's a keeper right over here. I see him. He's chasing my bait. You know what? Let me let me toss a smell at him. That might make him bite. Bigger fish hard to catch, I see. Oh shit, there's two squirrels fighting. Oh snap. Oh man, he whooping his ass. 
He was whooping his ass. Man, I can't, I can't, hold on, folks. Let me get this on camera. I'm not even recording. Yo, yo, that one squirrel got beat down, bruh. Oh, man, I had my back turned to the action. Wait, wait, there we go, there we go, over there. Oh, he gone. He whooped his ass and he run off. Wow, those are some fat squirrels too, man. I wish it was squirrel season. Back to mad at hand. All right, I noticed that these bluegill are chasing, right? And they're really not hitting the smell. Oh, there they go, there they go, right up there. Is he by himself? Yeah. Okay, the squirrel. All right, never mind. Anyway, so I noticed the bluegill are chasing, right? So, folks, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a curly tail grub. This is green pumpkin. All right, it's green pumpkin curly tail grub. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of scent. And that should work. Okay. When green pumpkin don't work, I can uh, just switch to black. I have five tiger. I also have white. But usually, man, curly tail grubs, oh yeah, they kill it. And why wouldn't this bait work? It's like the perfect bait. All right, folks, I'm continuing to just cruise along, and I'm just uh, fishing some areas, and if I get nothing, I move on right along. There's one, there's one true rule of thumb, 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. And that is so true. So I found a couple bluegills over there. Back a few hundred yards away, back around the bend. So I'm just continuing my same pattern here. And it's a little bit deeper over here. I suspect some bass might be over here. So. And I'm also, I'm still listening for any splashes, looking for any bulls, any birds congregating around. So I still got my eyes and ears wide open. Yeah, so I kind of already suspect that uh, since the panfish on the spawn, you know, they won't be in every, they won't be wrapped around every bank. So. I'm doing I am just 
fishing along, eliminating all that dead water. Yeah, I think some good man might be the bass over here. We'll keep that panther morning the way it is. I'm gonna tell him to smell. See folks, one key to success, finding a pattern, sticking to it, and then find another pattern. All right, I got a couple right here. I got a, this Panther Martin, this is working pretty good for the bluegill. And I got this smeltman on right here for everything. And then I have on my rattle trap. And I just got a bite, okay. Yeah, see these bluegill eyes. Some of these bluegill are tucked deep in this stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, come on folks. Ah yeah. That's a nice one here. As soon as I threw it on. Got it. Come on, baby. Oh man. Good man. That's a nice chunk in one fishing, folks, you see. Oh, I got him hooked good right in that jawbone, too. Oh. All right, folks, that's what I'm talking about right there. You match the hatch. That's a solid two-pound bass, too. That's a pretty bass. All right, I'm gonna let that baby go back. There we go. Now, gotta catch another one. All right, folks, I did some switching up. I have uh, big swim baits, the same color as those uh, Bobby Garland and Shads, those Cajun crickets. So I threw one on. I mean, and as soon as it smacked the water, that bass crushed it. So, folks, you match the hatch, and now you find the active fish. They splashing in the door. 
Oh man, yeah, see, I see where the fish at now. I see. The sun, I see the sun is shining over there. Man, I can see in the sunlight as a tree branch. And it's probably some bluegill over there. And the bass are just crushing the bluegill. So let me insert my bait. Over there. I need to fix my weed guards, this is very important. And I keep these right. Splashes now, folks. I think I might move on. I got that one fish I needed. All right, folks. I am now over at a shaded grass line. Cause it looks pretty nice over here. Got a fish on y'all, he got off. Damn. folks as y'all can see I got my panther martin I'm fishing parallel to the bank all right and I just lost the bluegill
Panther Martin, which I'm using right now, fishing shady banks through deeper water close by. So I got that key. Like, the, yeah, these fish, they're not on any shallow bank. All the banks got deeper water close by. And I'm just sitting in the deeper water and just casting up shallow. I've been getting bites like that. Uh, I've been seeing some bass blow up on the bluegill. I've been chasing the bass. And there you go, folks. Soon as that splash went down, got a fish on. Oh, yeah. I wonder what kind it is. <laughs> I don't know if it's a crappy. Uh oh. Has he got me hung up? Okay, now I'm free now. Oh, what is this? Looks like a nice bluegill. Yeah, another bluegill. And they'll turn this Panther Martin up, but I'm telling y'all. And it's right here at these shady banks now. All right, folks, there are some kind of fish over here. I don't know if it's bass, carp, or what. Got something. I got a fish. Oh, folks, it's a giant carp. Oh, man, I caught a carp. Oh, I got a six pound line. Six pound line, and a giant carp is taking me. Oh, my God, man. Damn, he came off. Wow. That was amazing. Oh my God. Mm. Goodness gracious of light. <laughs> that, that summer gun took me. Nice fish on, folks. Here we go. That's another. I hope it's another perch. And it is. Yes, this is a keeper perch. Oh my god, this is the first perch I ever caught. Oh my god, this is world history, folks. I gotta drop an anchor. Oh my god. Wow. That is amazing. Yo, this is the first perch I ever caught in my life. And I got a bait that look just like this that I can, oh man, I'm catching bass on, oh my. Look, this is the first perch I ever caught in my life. Look at that, it's a keeper. Dang, man, that's world history, folks. I hope y'all saw that, man, look at this. That is amazing. First perch, I thought I had to go on a two hour drive just to get them, but they're right here. I gotta catch another one. Oh, 
yeah, I'm hearing splashing and action. This side, this part of the lake right here is on and popping right here. I got another fish. He, oh, he jumped up out that water, man. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Man, that was a little, that was a small, that was a baby largemouth. I saw that. Okay. Might have found a little spot here. Oh, I saw something struck at it again. Wow. You know what? I'm going to put some scent on this bad boy. Shoot, yeah. Ah, struck at it again. Missed it. All right, man, this is exhilarating right here. This is why I do what I do. Oh, folks, I saw that. That was a monster strike. Look at that. That, oh man, the blue gear came out of nowhere. That was a monster strike. And I'm gonna keep this one. This is a keeper. Well, no. Nah, 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 that's not a keeper. Almost. Almost a keeper, man. Okay, here we go. Let's get this. Man, let's keep it rocking. I'm going to fan cast this bank right here. I'm going to beat this bank up. Ah, shit. What the hell, man? Oh, it's teaming over here with the pan fish. I got another one. Got another fish. I wonder what it is. They are perching bluegill over here. That's a baby bluegill. All right, that's okay. These fish are freaking hungry, man. Wow, okay, 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 okay. All right. Oh, man, it's on and popping now, y'all, see? In the area I was fishing earlier, it was just uh, all shallow water. But here we go, like I say, here's a shallow bank with deeper water close by. I'm sitting in the deeper water and I'm casting up shallow. That is a solid pattern I got right here going on. All right, folks. I just let every right here so I can see that the uh, oh, fish, the bank gradually gets steeper. So. Goddamn, learn that shit. Fish, decent fish too. Wow, he just man, these fish are just coming up to me. All right, and and he, <laughs> this treble hook is a monster. They begin two out of three hooks. They are. Now let that little brim go back on home. Well, folks, I don't know if y'all can. All right, folks. Nah. All right, folks, I don't know if y'all can hear the thunder in the background, but it is rumbling and it's coming more and more closer to home. Maybe so. That means one thing. I got to wrap this up. All right, we'll just call it the end of part one. Part two is coming back. Uh, there will be a part two uh, due to the weather. 
because I am not done, all right? Caught some fish that I never caught before in my life for the first time today in a new lake that I never fished before ever. So, I mean, that's just, that does it all for me right there. It makes me want to come back, fish hard, even harder, and stay even longer. So, hope you got a lot of good info off this first part here. The weather is uh, about to kick my tail. So, I got to get up out of here, folks. So, as always, thanks for watching. All right, stay tuned for part two, and keep fishing, folks. Get up off the couch, it's time to go fishing. Get up out the house, it's time to go fishing. Go and get the kids, it's time to go fishing. You'll be glad you did, it's time to go fishing.